Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about skin retouching using frequency separation. I've seen many different methods but I believe the method I've been taught is the best method. Let's get going, let's duplicate this layer. Command or Control J. Now I'm going to use the spot healing brush first because I think this is the best way of working. I get rid of the worst blemishes, then I go to frequency separation. Let's get started with the spot healing brush. J on your keyboard, make sure it's on normal and content aware. You can occasionally use lighten to get rid of deep wrinkles, but normal and content aware will be fine. I obviously realize I need to work quickly. If I want to make the brush larger and smaller, right hand square bracket key will make it larger, left will make it smaller. So I'm going over these little fine lines on his forehead and any big spots I can see because I want to use those lines on the forehead. You don't want to go too far that you, you're losing reality because everyone's got lines on their skin. These fine lines around his eye, left square bracket key going now. A bit shaky there. But I don't want to go too far, maybe a look around his eye there. Obviously this gentleman has quite good skin. A few spots here and there. And there. Big one there. Now I can get rid of stray hairs as well. If I was had a lot more time, I would go around doing that. But I haven't, so I'm not going to. So I'm move, hand tool moving it back to where it was there. Sorry about that. Um, uh, any more lines? Anything else I can think of? It's a bit too red there, so I might do that there. The colour I'm not worried about. It's the big blemishes I'm really worried about. Little redness there. I'll get rid of that. A bit more there. Uh, maybe... No, and maybe there. The very dark spots I might get rid of. Um, and obviously there, I'll get rid of that one there. But that'll do. Before and after, not a drastic change. We need to duplicate this layer twice. Command or Control, Alt or Option J will allow me to rename it. Blur. You could do it afterwards with Command J, but Command or Control, Alt or Option J, and name this one Texture. Turn the Texture one off, back to the Blur layer. Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, of which I have a keyboard shortcut of Shift and F6. I'm going to blur it to four pixels. It's already on four pixels, I'm not going to change it. You'll need to blur it so you don't see any texture on the skin. And I think that's absolutely fine. It will depend on the image. Okay, back to the texture layer. Click on it, make sure it's visible by clicking on the eye there. Image. Apply image of which I have my own keyboard shortcut. It's already set up, but basically it works like this. This is the source, that is the target. The target is the texture layer, the source is the blur layer. Make sure it's on blur, because if you do this, you know, the first time you do this, it will always be on merged. Make sure you've named your layer and you choose it. So it's the source is the blur layer, the channel is the composite channel. So it's about luminosity now because the blending modes on subtract, if I use any other blend modes beside add and subtract, I don't have scale and offset. So we're using subtract because we're on an 8-bit image and I'll show you the 16-bit method in a minute. You can see the 8 there, it's a JPEG, they're always 8-bit. So the subtraction works quite simply, and it's based on luminosity of the pixels, obviously. So if you've got the target layer, which is the texture layer, which has, let's say, a luminosity of 200, and you're subtracting uh, for, with using the source layer, 100, pixel to pixel, you're left with 100. So it means it's going to get darker. Subtract always makes it darker. Simple as that. Because then that number gets passed to scale. And what scale does, it works between 1 and 2. If it's on 1, nothing happens. So 100 was the result of subtraction, divided by 1 is still 100. But it only goes up to 2, so if you put it on 2, it's going to make it darker and going to soften off the effect. But it always makes it darker. Now what we do then, we pass it to offset. On 0, it's going to look very black. There's a bit of information left there, but basically it's black. So what we're doing, we're making it brighter or darker. We can go to minus 255 or we can go to 255. So a huge range at 128. If it's nearly black, that's going to make most of it 50% grey. And that's what it is. Now that's the 8-bit method. The 16-bit method is this. Add, blur again, invert, 2 and 0. And that's the 16-bit method. But we're on an 8-bit image, subtract, 
invert of scale of two offset of one, two, eight. So that's the eight bit method. Okay, now, as I said, it's mainly 50% gray. Any one of these contrast modes from overlay to hard mix will make 50% gray transparent. We're going to use linear light. And what linear light basically does, it makes 50% gray transparent and makes the light slightly brighter and the darks slightly darker. A bit more complicated than that. But anyway, that's what it does. So we have this texture layer. If I shift click on the blur layer and go Command or Control G to make a group, I might even give it a name, High Freak. If I turn it on and off, you notice no difference whatsoever, and there isn't any difference. So we brought everything back to normal. Now, some people work like this. They get the lasso tool on a certain feather, go like this on the blur layer this is, and draw around like that, go to Gaussian Blur, Shift F6, my keyboard shortcut, and play around the Gaussian Blur to smooth off the skin, and it looks absolutely awful. So cancel on that, Command or Control D, to lose the marching ants to deselect. What you need to do is work on the layer between blur and texture, because the whole idea of this is you've got the texture on another layer. You've got rid of the worst blemishes, so you've got this texture, and you need to leave that texture alone, because that is, that's making the image look quite normal. If you start to play around with that lassoing method or work on the texture layer, and get rid of stuff with the clone stamp tool, etc. you're really taking away from the character of the photograph. You're making it look too plastic. So you need to work between the blur and the texture. So let's create a new layer. Shift, Command, N. Call it Paint, because what we're going to do is now paint on this layer. So go to your brush tool, make sure you've got a soft brush, F5 on your keyboard, hardness is down to zero. F5 to lose that. There are other ways of finding out what the hardest of your brush is, but that's the quick, well, the, the easiest method. So we've got a soft, round brush. That's what you need. Right, with this soft, round brush, what you need to do is sample down by pressing the Alter Option key and sample areas and paint. But we need to check our eyedropper tool first. So we go to the eyedropper tool. Sample should be on current and below because we're working on a blank layer. That's really important. And the average around 5x5 five five or 3x3 three three will be absolutely fine. So make sure that's set up properly. B for brush, back to the brush. What we do then, we alter option, sample down into that blur layer, and we're sampling the colors from the blur layer. So I want to get rid of this shine on his head. I will start picking around the edges of it and starting to work in on the shine. So I'm constantly sampling as I'm going along. It's constantly, but my flow is on 10%. Now I'm using far too big a brush for this, but I'm trying to blend the colors in. That's all I'm trying to do. So try, that area there needs a bit of work. So I'm gonna keep blending in a bit of white into there to smooth it off a little bit. Not too much that it looks too plasticky. Don't forget, we still got our texture. This is why you shouldn't work on your texture. You should work in this method. And I believe, you know, the, the few extra minutes you have to, to play around with Painting is well worth it. My brush is far too large, I know that, but I'm trying to work quickly. The nose again, I will always sample nearby, but it's got to be a lighter colour because I'm trying to lose that red. And don't forget, every time I click down, it's a bit more flow going, so I don't want to do it too badly. Probably my sample size might be a bit too large. Maybe I should have gone to three by three. But anyway, I'm getting rid of the worst redness on his nose by sampling around and picking other skin colors, because this is what you want to do. So you, you don't want to pick colors that don't exist. I'm sampling from his face. I know it's the blurred layer, but that doesn't make any difference. It's fine. So I'm going around doing this with a far too big a brush to do that. I still think it's a bit too red there. I might go up. Don't forget, I'm now coming to what I call saturation on his nose because I've gone over these areas before. If I hit the same area 10 times, I have the equivalent of 100% opacity and 100% flow. So I'm being careful. Just a little bit more around that eye there, just to lighten off a bit. Not too much, a few lines there. And probably around that bit edge of his eye there, the dark bits there to sort of smooth it off. A few blotchy bits there and there. So I'm getting rid of them. 10% flow, I sometimes even go down to 5%, um, just to smooth out those areas there. So what have I done so far? I'll just go around there. Well, let's show you. Let's collapse that group. 
Um, turn it on and off. I've gone from that to that. In fact, if I turn that heel layer off, I, mean, I should have named that heel, I'm going to now. I do like naming my layers. So if I turn that off, I've gone from that to that. It looks real. And this is the whole idea of using the paint layer. Because what you're doing is you're working between the texture and the blur layer. Now, you are flattening off the features of the face slightly. And normally you use a dodge and burn to bring stuff back. So giving contouring on the cheekbones, etc. So what I would sometimes do, it, this image doesn't need it, but I would go Command Shift or Command and Control Shift N, create a new layer, call it DB for dodge and burn. And what I would do then, I could merge visible by going Command and Control E. That means I lose everything. But what I would normally do is this. Command and Control, Alter Option, Shift E, difficult for your fingers, and make a stamp layer. It's keyboard shortcut only. So Command and Control, Alter Option, Shift E, kept pressed. It's called the claw or the fist or a stamp layer. I prefer the word stamp layer. And you create uh, a merge visible on one layer without losing all the other layers. So if you go merge visible, you, you'll lose them. And then there's various methods for dodging and burning. I'm not going to go into it in, in this video. I would do my dodging and burning to bring back you know, the, the, the cheekbones, etc. But this is not about that. But that's a basic skin retouch. I think I will do dodging and burning the different methods you can use for, for portrait retouching in another video. That's it, guys. Quickly, 16-bit and 8-bit, you have two different methods. So be careful of that. And always work between your texture layer and your blur layer. So paint on that layer. You could even start sharpening the eyes and doing all sorts in between those two layers. That's it, guys. That is the easiest way, and I believe the best way, to retouch skin with frequency separation.